Hello! Welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today I'm going to show you the key features of Apple's latest OS, iOS 7, as installed on my iPad 2. What you see here is the startup screen of the new look OS. But first, a note of caution before I go on. On an older iPhone or iPad, the update is about 600 megabytes in size and larger for the newer iPads and iPhones. The installation also requires a lot of space to install itself, at least 3 gigabytes of free space. So if you want to do this, you need to ensure that you do have that space and plenty of time. This install on my iPad took almost 90 minutes. On the lock screen, the changes in the layout are immediate. To get to the passkey keypad, all I have to do is to swipe to the right the entire screen and then, my, then key in my password. The new layout is cleaner and brighter than in the past and the glossy aesthetic is replaced by flat icons and transparent navigation panels. Another key feature is the constant access to the control centre and notification centre. These can be accessed at any time by either swiping up from the bottom or down from the top of the screen. Here you can see the control centre accessed by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. Here you can also see that I have instant access to music controls, brightness, flight mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and orientation settings. I also have rapid access to my clock, which is random, and the camera as well as the AirPlay controls. These controls can be accessed even if the iPad is locked, and I'll show you how to turn off this option later. Next I can access my notifications from the Notification Centre by swiping down from the top of the screen. Here I can see all of the apps that have sent me notifications and I have three screens to access which I do by swiping either left or to the right. The search function can be accessed from any screen by simply swiping downwards but take care to do this in the space between the apps and away from the top of the screen else you'll either open an app or the notification centre. The search function then works as before. The access to it is just faster and I like this feature. The double tap function of the home key still enables me to swap between apps, but the turning off of an app is now different. Now when I double tap, not only do I see the app icons of the apps that I have recently used, I also see a thumbnail of the work I was last doing. For productivity this is a very useful feature, and now I can just scroll between the apps that I've been working on and jump between the different elements of work that I was working on. If, however, I want to turn an app off, the press and hold gesture on the icon does not work. Now, in iOS 7, to close an app, I have to swipe the thumbnail to the top of the screen to close the app. Now the app's closed. Do it again. Now the app's closed. Very simple. To move individual apps between screens, it is still the same process as before. I simply press and hold an icon until it jiggles and then move the icon to the location or screen of my choice. To set the move I have to press the home button once. In iOS 6 and earlier, folders had a finite size. I could store a maximum of 16 apps in one folder. In iOS 7 there is no limit. This means I can now tidy up some of my folders. Here. Because of the previous limit, I have two folders of maths apps, and I now am going to collapse one folder by moving the apps in it to the other folder. To do this, I open the folder, press and hold on one icon until all of them are jiggling, and then move the app so that it's outside the folder. Then, once it's outside, I can then move the app to my chosen folder. I then repeat this process until there are no apps in the initial folder. Once empty, the initial folder just disappears. In iOS 7, Apple has made some changes to how the Photos app handles and organises images. Images are now automatically organised into moments, collections and years. A moment are the images that are taken on a particular day. A collection is a set of images taken over a week or so, and years need no explanation. To browse through them, I can either use the direction arrow on the top left of the screen to move up a level, or to drill down from a collection to a moment, all I have to do is to click on the image concerned, and it expands. Organising images into albums is easier too. Using the albums icon in the bottom of the page, I can create new albums. There are already seven images waiting to be placed into an album called School. 
To complete the task, all I have to do is to click on the toolbar and the new album will appear. To repeat the process, I will create a new album called Test by clicking on the plus sign at the top left. I then name my album and then select some images from today. Simple. The Settings app in iOS 7 has been changed around a bit, and so when you upgrade, it's worth spending some time in here. The categories have been organised and have been given little separation gaps and colour added to make them visually easier to navigate through. The Navigation Centre and Control Centre have been given their own section so that I can change the settings in here if I want to. For example, in the Control Centre, I can turn off the ability to access this information from the lock screen if I want to. Under the general settings, the accessibility options have now been moved further up the menu list to make them easier to find, and also the range of support that they now contain continues to grow and is well worth looking at. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more e-learning tutorials, and don't forget to let your colleagues know. These tutorials are for sharing, so please do. Until my next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing!